Hi, in this video, I'll be showing you how to prepare a chicken skeleton from scratch employing the technique of cold water maceration. To begin with, obtain a chicken that's fairly large in size because a chicken has a couple of very tiny bones that might be quite difficult to deal with later if you were to choose a tinier specimen. Next step, euthanize the chicken using any of the methods found on the internet. Once the chicken's dead, dip it in hot water for about 5 minutes and start plucking off the feathers from the body. Cut open the chicken in the abdominal area, remove the internal organs, and using a sharp knife or scalpel, proceed with removing as much flesh as possible, making sure at the same time that no bone is broken or accidentally cut. You will end up with something like this. The more flesh is removed, the lesser time it will take for maceration to complete, and also the lesser will be the smell. Next step. Transfer the defleshed chicken into several opaque containers having a lid and pour fresh water into them to completely submerge the chicken parts. It's advisable that you divide the body of the chicken into several parts such as left wing, right wing, left leg, right leg, etc. which I didn't do as you can see here. And this was a mistake I made. I call it a mistake because later when I proceeded to arrange the bone for articulation, I wasted a considerable amount of time deciding which bone is which. This was made even worse by the lack of proper reference books and materials specifically on chicken bone articulation. Also, do not use a transparent container like I used here. Again, a mistake on my part. You will see later in the video why you should use an opaque container and not a transparent one. Having said all that, it's now time to let nature take its course. Leave the containers for about 2-4 to four weeks in a shady, undisturbed area away from humans and animals such as pets. And here's the third mistake I made. I left the containers exposed to sunlight and these had some nasty consequences on the bones, which you will see later in the video. The amount of time it will take for maceration to complete will depend on the prevailing climate in your area. The warmer the climate, the shorter time it will take. Change the water every 2-3 to three days during the maceration period. When changing the water, keep in mind though that some of the very tiny bones may float on the surface along with the pieces of fat and flesh. So take precautions accordingly, such as using a sieve to filter the floating particles when draining the water. I wasn't careful enough in this and so I ended up losing a couple of tiny bones. At the end of the maceration period, this is what you'd get. And as you can see, the bones in the transparent container exposed to sunlight have a reddish coloration which is not a good thing. Next step, proceed with the degreasing process. This step is necessary to remove the grease and fat that's left in the bones. I used a mixture of 50% ammonium hydroxide and a dish washing liquid soap for this purpose. Ammonium hydroxide alone would be the preferred choice, but I didn't have sufficient ammonia at that time, so I had to reuse a dish soap along with the ammonia. You can also use dish soap alone. In the United States, there's Dawn, and if you're in India, there's Vim Drops. You can use any liquid dish soap that's locally available in your area, though. That being said, immerse the bones in the degreasing liquid for about a week. After a week, carefully drain off the degreasing liquid and rinse the bones thoroughly with fresh water five to six times. These are the bones after a week of degreasing, and here's a comparison of the bones before and after the degreasing process. At this stage, you may remove any adipocere sticking to the bones using a soft brush and water. Adipocere, aka corpse wax, is a whitish waxy insoluble substance formed by the decomposition of soft tissues in dead bodies subjected to moisture. It usually stays even after the degreasing process and therefore has to be manually removed. Once the adipocere has been sufficiently removed from the bones, it's now time for the bleaching process. This step is optional though. If you want your bones to have that natural look and color, you may choose to skip this step and proceed directly to articulating the bones. But if you want the bones to have a fresh whitish look, this step will help you in achieving that. For the bleaching process, you will need a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide. Immerse the bones in hydrogen peroxide for about 30 minutes to 1 hour depending upon how white you want your bones to be. Treating the bones with hydrogen peroxide for more than 1 hour will result in excessively bleached and brittle bones. Also remember that the bleached bones when dried are much more whiter in color than when still wet and in the bleaching solution. 
So make your own judgment when subjecting the bones to bleaching. Once sufficient bleaching has been accomplished, drain off the hydrogen peroxide and rinse the bones thoroughly in fresh water 5-6 to six times to completely remove the hydrogen peroxide from the bones. Dry the bones for an entire day in sunlight or artificial light. This is what you get. Once drying is complete, you can now proceed to arranging the bones on a table in the way that you would finally articulate them. Let's start with the skull. With cold water maceration, you should expect a highly disarticulated skull like this. A handful of tiny fragile bones along with the larger cranium and jaw bones make up the skull of birds. I spent several hours just putting the skull together. I'll be making another video on articulating the bones for display. And in that video, I'll be covering in detail where each of the tiny bones fit in the skull. For now, I'll stop at this stage where I've simply arranged the bones that would make up the skull. Next, the vertebral column. Chicken has altogether 40 bones in the vertebral column. It starts with the atlas bone located immediately below the base of the skull and ends with the pigo style, aka the tail bone. There are 13 cervical vertebrae, 7 thoracic vertebrae, 14 lumbosacral vertebrae, and 6 caudal vertebrae including the pigo style. This relatively large structure in the vertebral column is called the synsacrum and is actually 14 lumbosacral vertebrae fused together to form what appears to be one single structure. Like I said before, I'll be coming up with another video on articulating the bones and in that video I'll be covering in detail on how to arrange the vertebrae from top to bottom. Next we have the wing bones. It consists of the humerus, radius and ulna, radial and ulnar carpals, carpometacarpus and the phalanges. There's a total of 12 bones for each wing. And this is basically how both the articulated wings would look like. More details on how to arrange them in the next video on articulation that's coming up soon. Moving on, these are the coracoid and scapula of the left and the right. This is the clavicle bone and this weird looking straight out of an alien movie kind of structure is the sternum. These are the rib bones consisting of 7 pairs of thoracic ribs, 5 pairs of sternal ribs and 4 pairs of uncinate processes. Again, details on how to articulate them will be covered in the next video. These are the pair of pelvic bones that connect to either sides of the sacrum and consists of the ilium, ischium and pubis. Connected to the pelvis, we have the leg bones consisting of the femur, tibia, fibula, patella, nemial crest, hypotarsal sesamoid, tarsometatarsus, first metatarsus, hallux and the phalanges. So this is how a basic layout of the disarticulated skeleton looks like. In another video that's coming up soon, I'll be covering in detail on how to articulate every bit of the bones using hot glue and some wires and end up with a beautiful articulated skeleton that would serve both educational and aesthetic purposes. I hope this short video on how to prepare a chicken skeleton was of help to you in your project. To be honest, this was my first attempt at preparing an animal skeleton, in this case a bird skeleton. Granted, I made a few, in fact several mistakes, but I also learned a lot from them, especially those that one shouldn't do. I just want to give a brief highlight of the things that I learned that one shouldn't do when preparing a chicken skeleton. Number one, on what not to do. Do not use a transparent container for macerating the chicken, and especially do not leave the containers in direct sunlight. I made this grave mistake with one of the containers and I ended up with bones that had a reddish coloration which was quite difficult to completely remove with the degreasing process and even the bleaching process. My guess is that sunlight triggered some sort of organic reaction to occur within the bones which resulted in the coloration. The ones that I kept in the stainless steel container came out just fine though and almost didn't have such a coloration on them. Number 2. Do not bleach the bones in hydrogen peroxide for more than an hour. In my desperate attempt to remove the red color from the bones that I've just mentioned, I bleached the bones for about two or so hours. By the end of one hour, the surface of the bones had become chalky and brittle, and I could actually rub off the white from the bones. But I actually continued bleaching it, hoping that the red color would be eventually bleached white. Even after two hours, there was still some reddish tints on the bones, but I had to stop the bleaching process. Number three, when changing the water during the maceration process, it would be a good idea to not just pour off the water directly. You might want to use a sieve to filter the water so that the tiniest of the bones which might have possibly been floating on the surface along with the pieces of fat and flesh would not get lost. 
I made the mistake of not using such a filtering device and I ended up losing a bunch of tiny bones. Once again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it and I also hope it has been helpful even if remotely to the bone related project you are currently working on. Do like or unlike the video, do subscribe to my channel and if you have anything in mind, a suggestion, an advice, a compliment or even a constructive criticism about this video, then please feel free to drop a comment below and I'll make sure I look into it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.